Hey guys, Tough Thumbs here. Got some cool stuff to show you tonight. A um, few modifications, just some knives and just knife porn in general and some pimp jobs. Uh, so, as I look at them right now, I'm realizing, oh yeah, there's two. That's right. Two or three. So, um, first of all, these are pretty much my rotation recently uh, for my EDC besides this one. Uh, my Strider, Hinder, uh, the Sirius, and the Tough One, of course. Always be carrying this at some point with its awesomely off center blade. I don't know what I did to do that, but <laughs> it was centered before. Anyway, must be a thou off here or there, or something like that. But I uh, kind of did, did refurb on the uh, flipper here. Uh, I wasn't really liking some of the shapes, uh, the, the uh, flipper was protruding way too much. And, uh, you know, I basically refinished it. It still needs a, a little tweak here and there. Um, and also, kind of. Kind of screwed up. I put the Tough Knives logo there, which probably wouldn't have been there unless I had done what I did on the other side. Uh, so, originally put the, <laughs> the logo on there and I kind of slipped when I went to etch the logo on, as you can see there in the corner. So, you know, I got to redo it. So I just figured I'd just see what it looked like uh, with like a crazy Strider style. Or like, you know, the logo just going all over the place. Kind of cool, I guess. Not my thing, but... Awesome knife, I like it still. I'm gonna get a pot clip on here. I'm in trouble designing one that goes on it well. But basically stone wash uh, the lock side and the the uh, blade. And uh, I like this shape better. It's less shark fin looking. But it still provides a lot of uh, protection there from slipping up on the blade and good purchase for uh, flipping. That is the tough flipper. So anyway, I uh, also had to make up one of these uh, bad boys uh, because the one I basically sold or gave away, I guess. And uh, basically this one's A2, probably gonna do a bunch of them in A2. Good steel. Uh, kind of redesigned some little things that you cuts inward in an angle more like this way. Kind of lock your finger in there better, kind of push up on it. Uh, same with this choil here, which is down lower and you get more of a, uh, more of like a sub hilt thing going on there and it's very comfortable like this. As well as this plus uh, the original one didn't have a curve up here it was kind of flat because that was a kind of a accidental thing just happened when I was making it there wasn't any room to uh, basically you know, there was no more steel up here so I basically made the knife on the shape that was left of the steel it was kind of a weird thing but uh, this will be the first one out of the prototypes I used her for water jetting so get a bunch of these made hopefully and I'll let you guys know the price and everything um, but yeah, I just can't be without one of these, so it's the first one I had to make it out so I could trace more. Uh, and also, uh, last night, me and Sebastian and Long were hanging out. Um, what up, music? Suddenly went all quiet. I know some of you are happy about that. Anyway. Yeah, Sebastian came over and uh, we went a little skull crazy, I guess you said. Putting bowies on everything and uh, putting skulls on stuff. So first up, I took my uh, hinderer here and I kind of copied off of like the hinderer. Put a little skull guy on the, uh, I don't even know what you call that thing. A little spacer, space taker or something. Just kind of looks cool, little tiny baby skull. I like it. <laughs> it's a cool little touch there. But instead of spending, uh, I think it's 85 bucks on one of those things, I figured I'd just do it myself. Just a little cheap skull bead, cut it in half, glued it on there. So, right, and, that, and then this, the Darth Strider. This worked out perfectly. This skull just like, it looks awesome. It's like made for it. So my Strider is looking badass right now. I love my Strider, wear is awesome. Look at that wear on there. See, see this is how you use a knife, guys. This is what it looks like when you use a high-end knife. Or, you know, it's more fun that way, you know? I use this thing all the time. I think I was cutting some oranges for uh, for myself and uh, Vance's daughter this morning, actually. It was pretty funny, she's a cute kid. Good knife. And, uh, you know, the regulars, or the, not the regulars, the serious. It's just here, because I like it. We're all loving those, the serious and the regulars recently. And uh, the one I did the regrind on, finished, acid wash it again. It's got sort of a two-tone acid wash. 
It's uh, darker up top, lighter in the grind area. It's very nice. Kind of like a hand stone wash there. And no stickiness at all, as I said before. Nice and smooth. Yeah, we all sort of love both of these knives. So guys, I highly recommend these. Uh, man, I, I, I forget the name whenever I'm on camera. Uh, damn, I had it yesterday. I was saying it a bunch of times. D... Uh, serious and Irregulous. If I think of the name in the middle of the video, I'll tell you guys. So first pimp job, uh, this is basically the original Praetorian that started it all for us here. This was given to me as a gift. And basically it was uh, traded for a poltergeist. And it got to Vance. And it's kind of stayed in the family, I guess you'd say. Um, this is our first real experience with Medford Knives. Um, but uh, it was pimped for someone else originally uh, when I got it because uh, I didn't know he was gonna give it to me as a gift. So it was pimp for him and it was, it's all right looking, you know, but it had some weird problems I didn't like about it. It was purplish, but it was just dark, which is what he was going for, an acid wash. So today Vance is like, you know, why the hell don't we just, you know, put this thing how we want it? So uh, for one, there was no detent at all. And uh, so I put a new detent in there. Let's get to it. You know, me and, me and Vance's style here. You know, stone wash blade. Looks gorgeous. Reground that bitch right there, that nice sharp edge. And of course, stonewash the handles as well. And as you can see, it doesn't have your usual Medford pivot. I put one of the Alpha Knife Supply pivots in there. Looks really nice. Fits perfectly. This side, we're thinking about doing some cool thing around here. Just kind of make it look a little bit more perfect, I guess. But the stone wash is awesome. Looks awesome with this. The blade looks amazing. And uh, the detent, this thing has never really had any real detent to it. Sucks in just fine. Uh, before it was literally like going like that, it fell right out. So, yeah, so nice and smooth. No blade play, just perfect. Perfect in every way. This is my favorite. I hope the one that, uh, that Greg's making for me is as awesome as this. I'm sure it will be. It's definitely my favorite knife to come out of uh, his shop, for sure. It's just really does it for me. But, uh, you know, the detent, I don't know. We concluded that Anonymous had it when the detent went on this. And when I took it apart today to look at it, the detent was literally, it looked like someone shaved it smooth. It was flush and looked like it had been smashed and then smoothed over. And I don't see a blade. I mean, maybe it could do that, but I mean, geez. That's ridiculous, so, love this knife. Smooth as hell, and uh, I was hitting the lock bar there. Looks great now, looks a lot better than it used to. Um, we got another Medford here too. But uh, first up, this this knife, oh man, this knife was terrible when I got it. Um, this is from my buddy Bob, sent it to me, and I really, really like Mikel Williamson's knives a lot, but there's a couple that I've actually, I've only handled maybe, Maybe, uh, to be honest, around seven or eight, I guess. Uh, the first experience I had, it was terrible. They were sitting on the table. I don't know if the pivots were loose or something, but they were smack against the side and like blade play and was scraping. I don't know why the guy was displaying them like that, uh, but it, it, it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, but I was like, okay, that could just be uh, dealer error. Hold on a second. But, uh, but yeah, you know, they're smooth and they're comfortable, but but then the ones that have the, similar to this, like the ones that have the uh, lip right there and there for the stop pin, uh, every one of those I held was just awesome. And I loved it, but it seemed like the ones that didn't have that, I mean, I just probably happened to, but this one I got and it was the same way. I was kind of like, you know, I don't know. So I did like an overhaul on it pretty much. It could have been like an old one or something, but as far as I can tell, it was just, I don't know. So, really awesome blade here. Kel Williamson, awesome designs. He's doing a collaboration with Browse right now. Uh, this is very sharp, very pointy. Uh, grind is like, almost like a chisel ground. I don't know, I don't know if that was done on purpose or, uh, it's just a gorgeous blade though, it cuts really well. Uh, you know, it's a carbon fiber, or not carbon fiber, titanium. Uh, sandblast, just been re-sandblasted. Um, 
You see these two pins at the bottom here, there's a reason for that. So uh, basically this was just G10 on one side, IKBS on it, and uh, it was nearly impossible to get to the thumb stud because it's so far in. So put carbon fiber on it, a lot thinner, but also put a titanium liner in there as well because I could not get the carbon fiber that the, here, I'll show you, I'll get the scale real quick. Anyway, sorry about that guys, I'm a little unprepared, just kind of got ideas in the middle of the video here. Um, but you can see the stop pin placement is so close to that edge there, the carbon fiber will not let you drill, it will just fray instantly. So basically I had to make a titanium liner to get that pin to stay in there. And uh, it does, it's good. Nice and thin here so you can really easily get access to that. Uh, there's no blade play at all. There was a lot of blade play before, and no matter what I did to it, I just couldn't get rid of it at all. Again, I'm not bad-mouthing the maker, guys. I'm making observations as I do these things, and uh, it is what it is. So if you want to take it as an insult, uh, then go ahead and take it as an insult, but it's nothing but just just my, you know, I can't say otherwise. It's just, you know, my experience with this knife was, was kind of negative, but overall positive experience because it turned out perfect. But as I said, Mikel Williamson makes a great knife. This could have been like, you know, this is like probably third or fourth hand, so who knows what happened to it. But it's so smooth, I like it a lot now. Rips open like so fast. Great detent, awesome knife. So yeah, I recommend his knives. The ones that I felt uh, I checked out at the blade show this year were amazing. So the, old one, the ones I had problems with were like two and a half years ago or something like that, and they could have been old. And this one could have been old as well, so. Not knocking the maker at all. Uh, yeah, carbon fiber, nice and smooth. So, yep, went from this green, which is pretty cool. It's definitely a signature style. All right, next up. So now, uh, this one I pimped from my buddy Brian. You guys know him as B Dunn on here. I might put a link there to his channel. Now the story behind this one is I got it, and it's like one of the. It's not one of these. The tie out is one of the aluminum or uh, thin, thinned out versions. And, um, you know, Greg had said that he, when I pimp his knives, like, make sure to put a logo or something on there, my logo, so they know it's been done. So, uh, you know, I did one, one further, just so, uh, you know, we didn't have any mix-ups anymore, guys, uh, about, about Medford knives and what's been pimped or whatnot. Uh, so, you got the Tough Knives Carbon Fiber. I swear to God, there's some way to block that light out, but there we go. Tough Knives Carbon Fiber. So, enough logos to uh, to kill somebody there. Tough Knives everywhere. It's nice and smooth, lockup's good, no blade play, of course. Nice and smooth, definitely. Uh, this side has kind of been uh, stone washed and darkened slightly. Uh, the pocket clip as well. Uh, well, pocket clip wasn't stone washed yet, so. But uh, you can't really tell on camera here. I may be like doing another another bit to this to change it a little bit more, but uh, everything's good on it, solid, smooth, and uh, I don't like this as much as these because you know this is this guy this blood groove here is a lot deeper because this is thicker, so you can get your finger in there real easy. Yeah, this one kind of slip off a little bit, but you know you can always open it like that, or of course, like Greg says in his videos, you just give it a whip. Definitely opens nicely, and this one has more of a choil feeling area here, but uh, it's definitely cool. I mean, some would say more usable blade because it's thinner. I say that's more usable because you could stab through a brick house with it or a, <laughs> a tank with it. Uh, but I think you'll big just go all the way, you know. But uh, the carbon fiber looks great on here. I didn't do anything to the blade at all with standoffs or anything like that. It's just real nice, nice and clean for Brian. So, uh, yeah. So now here's the thing, guys. I made a video. You guys, a lot of people have asked me over time, and they kind of quit because they just said, kept saying no, uh, to make a video showing how to make a scale. I basically made a 10-part video. I made each step that I do to make a scale, carbon fiber. Um, 
all the way to the end, guys. All secrets, whatever. There's no pattern work in it, really. Just, uh, you know, smoothing out and, you know, beveling and just, like, countersinking, shaping, everything. Even disassembly of the knife. Now, uh, I asked Greg beforehand just to make sure it was cool with him. And uh, I un he, it's understandable. He doesn't want the disassembly really on camera because I kind of use a makeshift tool that anybody can make to unscrew these things easily. And, uh, you know, he doesn't want everybody out there modifying knives, like, left and right, you know, and sending them back for warranty work when they mess them up, which is understandable. But I think I may be posting the video anyway, just mine's a disassembly. He said he's cool with that, so I'm going to send it to him to basically check it over firsthand. But he also said, free country, do what you want. You know, but, you know, I deal in respect, and I respect the guy. Uh, so, you know, I just wouldn't disrespect somebody if they had asked me nicely not to do something. Uh, so, this thing got smoother. He's right about breaking in. This thing has been played with a lot in the last two days. And it was like a little bit like right here, just a little bit rough. But now it's, uh, it's not anymore. It's nice and smooth. Oh man, I keep pinching my finger there. So that's pretty much what I got for you today, guys. And, um, put a pot clip on a fall nave and... <laughs> took me a good like almost an hour I mean you know tapping that steel and yeah tapping is not fun or easy so you know it is what it is but anyway guys tomorrow the craziness is going to begin um, Gavco Long Sebastian Tracy the whole crew well you guys never saw Tracy on camera uh, Brian's gonna be here maybe some newcomers too which will be pretty cool we got a guy who works at the Army Navy store down here uh, he's definitely a fan of me and me and Gavco's channel so uh, and we both have, you know, I had bought, bought knives from his store before, uh, Benchmade and a uh, Kershaw knockout. But, uh, yeah, he's a good dude, so hopefully he'll be here. But anyway, guys, have a great night. Thank you for watching. Let me know if I should post that, that how-to video. I think you guys want to see that. So, peace.